Now in my day, I've I've done a lot of damage with fling type cards. But I'm not quite sure that I've ever flung a 10 drop before. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben, you here for another Legacy video. And today Theodore has asked me to play with a Broadside Bombardier's Elder Gargadon Nick Fit Monstrosity decklist uh, that is pretty spicy. So let's start with our Greater Gargadon here. This has Suspend 10. Uh, so essentially, at the beginning of your upkeep, you get to take a suspend counter off of this card, and when they're all gone, you get to cast your 9-7 for free. But this isn't really here, expecting that you're going to just, like, chill with it in exile for 10 turns. Like, this is Legacy. You can effectively die on turn 1 in this format, and sometimes literally die. So instead, this card is primarily here as a sacrifice outlet, and we are going to abuse this card with Veteran Explorer. So the big draw of Veteran Explorer in Legacy is that you can use it to recycle a Cabal Therapy to take your opponent's best cards from their hand while also ramping yourself and maybe your opponent, because not all legacy decks are playing basic lands, despite how powerful basic lands can be. So we're going to use some combination of Cabal Therapy, the Greater Gargadon that we just looked at, Phyrexian Tower is a land that can do it, and we're going to have a few other ways that we can ramp with Veteran Explorer, such as pinging it with a Orcish Bowmasters or sacrificing it with a Grist. One of my biggest problems with Nickfit is that the veteran explorers for a long time were just feeling worse than just playing a mana dork of some kind, like some sort of bird of paradise, and just playing your three drop on turn two 100% of the time. So the last time I played a Nickfit deck with Bowmasters, it, it felt significantly stronger. And we're going to see how this version feels today. Greater Gargadon also combos with Titania, Protector of Argoth. So whenever a land you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you get a 5-3 green elemental creature token. So if you have a Titania in play and a suspended Greater Gargadon, you could just yeet all of your lands and turn each one of your lands into a 5-3 elemental, and that is a relatively powerful combo. And while you're doing that, you might even eat enough stuff to get the Greater Gargadon into play. And if you do that... Why not throw it with a broadside for a billion damage? So this is Theodore's deck list, which I'm mostly playing as it was originally submitted. The biggest problem with Theodore's original build is that I didn't think it had enough removal in the 75. There's a lot of like name sticker goblins and initiative creatures running around right now. So I added a playset of Furies to the 75, as well as some Dismembers in the sideboard. These were cards that weren't originally in the deck, but I felt like we needed some sort of lightning bolt, snuff out, fury, just something of that ilk to help remove creatures. I thought fury was a particularly good fit because it's another way to just kind of use the fact that we have red cards in the form of greater Gargadon within our deck. And we know how gross it is to play like a post-combat evoked fury and then throw it at our opponent's face for seven. Like... That, that, is, that is just dirty. So when I added the Fury into the deck, I opted to throw another Taiga into the mana base to make it more castable. Because there's, there's going to be a decent amount of the times where, like, after we Veteran Explored, we just have a billion mana. And so while I'm playing this mostly as a pitch spell, in the late game I still will be able to cast this. Um, Theodore's sideboard sent very strong... Um, Fuck you, blue deck vibes, if I'm being honest, and it's it's very clear what this sideboard was targeting. Um, the blue decks, and to a lesser extent, the graveyard decks are being targeted here, and then there's a lot of uh, collateral damage here for various artifact-based decks. There is an oof in the main deck, a second in the sideboard, and two meltdowns. We don't have manipulation, so it's not like... We're going to like cantrip and see these as often as like a blue deck would see their silver bullet sideboard cards, but we do have you know ever so slightly uh, just tiny tiny bits of card manipulation here. 
A quick note here, I'm recording this on Friday, January 19th, and this morning Pick Your Poison was spoiled from the upcoming Ravnica set, and if you end up playing any sort of fair green deck in Legacy in the future, this is something that probably should be on your radar as a very powerful and flexible sideboard slot. The ability to like answer Leyline Binding and Urza Saga and Merktide Regent with the same card is kind of wild. So if you end up needing any copies of those or other cards from the new set, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your next order when you do so. Let's battle. So I have a hand that could turn one Cabal Therapy, turn two Green Sun for Veteran Explorer, and then flashback Cabal Therapy, but then I don't really go anywhere from there. I think I am accordingly not interested in this hand. Oh, holy fuck, what happened here? Uh, no. We, we've got two Gargadons, we don't have red mana. Uh, absolutely not. This hand is good. It's a keep. I only get five of these. I'm going to keep one of Cabal Therapy or Greater Gargadon. I think I'm keeping the Therapy. Get rid of Ignoble Hierarch, probably. Uh, it's awkward if I like get Thought Seized and lose this, but I think I need to keep a piece of gas. Uh, we do kind of like oddly have three different ways to sacrifice the Veteran Explorer here. Don't chalice me. Don't do it. I have a family. Uh, that's fine. Okay, so this is this is the reason I added the Furies and the Dismember to the deck. Okay, this could have been way worse. Uh, so I now don't need to be worried about getting Blood Mooned in game one, in all likelihood. Um, that comes out of the sideboard, so I can fetch a duel. I'm, I'm thinking about my sequencing here. I can Cabal Therapy naming something like Goblin Ringleader here that could reasonably be in my opponent's hand still. Uh, which I think I am going to do. Let's grab a bayou. Oh, it's actually super awkward that I have this mountain. Fuck. Oh, well. Cabal therapy, you. Do I name ringleader or do I name matron? I think ringleader. If I were my opponent and I had battlecry goblin in hand and goblin matron, I would just like lead on goblin matron and get sticker goblin. Goblin ringleader, the crowd goes wild. The greatest of all time hits with Cabal Therapy yet again. Um, so the weird thing is that I'm going to like give my opponent some extra basic lands that they can uh, use to pump into Battlecry Goblin and cast Muxus. So like, uh, there's, there's going to be some downsides here. Able. I'm just going to confirm. I don't have a snow-covered mountain, right? Fuck. So awkward. Say la vie. I think I'm just going to play Veteran Explorer and pass then. Uh, I don't need to flashback. Oh wait, if, if I don't do Phyrexian Tower and I just flashback this way, why didn't my opponent Battlecry Goblin activate? That's weird. Alright, I'm going in. Yes, alright. Yeah. Yeah. This, in theory, means that my opponent has something red that they would do at instant speed, but that's like our fire, which I wouldn't want to be playing. Uh, maybe that is just an error. Uh, I'm going to name Muxus anyway, because the the cost of being Muxus being that last card in my opponent's hand is bad. Okay, it's a name sticker goblin. Yeah, so my opponent just missed damage. Uh, that's fine. So I'm going to play... Fable here, and then I'm going to play Broadside and attempt to stabilize the board afterwards. And I can loot away this Phyrexian Tower. Okay, there's the Sticker Goblin. So my opponent gets, what, three Battlecry Goblin activations? Oh, fuck, a Ringleader. Okay, that's scary. How bad is it? Uh, pretty bad. My opponent now gets to play a new name sticker goblin and then a war chief and then activate these some. Where is my fury? 
Yeah, I was planning on using Broadside to stabilize the board, take out Battlecry Goblin. Um, but that's not really realistic anymore, unfortunately. Six, seven total mana, three, and then my opponent gets two Battlecry Goblin activations. Fuck. So, I'm just dead, right? I block Battlecry Goblin, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, seventeen damage, exactly. Uh, yeah, so my opponent dropped a couple points of damage, but it doesn't matter. All right. Well, this is what these are for. And to a lesser extent, I can consider this stuff too. I do not want Collector Oof. I even hit with that random Cabal Therapy. Uh, let's assume that between combat damage and the other stuff that's in this deck that, like, like Greater Gargadons can just go. Uh, it's a little awkward to cut those when bringing in Furies, but... That might be happening. So I do this. Uh, maybe two Grist is too many Grist. Like, Grist does take some setup. I want to be able to Green Sun for one. Maybe I don't need both. And then I think about whether or not I want a higher red card count or whether or not I want some other generic bodies. I think higher red card count. I'm also going to go down one of these to just play a generic critter that I can green sun for when I am at a medium amount of mana. Turn one, suspend Gargadon. Turn two, veteran explorer, sacrifice, orcish bowmasters. Have, or I guess I can play my veteran explorer turn one even, and then keep the Gargadon in hand for a turn to decide if I want to pitch it to fury. Uh, I think I'm going to keep my hand. Playing the Gargadon on one means that I can tick down the suspend counters sooner. I'm not, like, expecting that to be the most relevant thing in the world. Uh, let's do it, though. Yeah. Um, now, my opponent can still come out the gate with an effective win on turn one if they have the nuts with, like, Ancient Tomb and Spirit Guide or Chrome Mox and Namesticker Goblin. Uh, which is looking likely. No imprint? Is this spirit, si uh, spirit guide into broadside throw chrome box? Uh, okay. On a high rolled. Okay, yeah. So that gets to throw chrome box. Got it. Battlecry goblin. So I take two this turn, and then I do... Absolutely disgusting things with a fury and punish the fuck out of my opponent for um, choosing such an aggressive line. Like, I am very happy about this. Uh, it's just, like, awkward that I'm about to give my opponent more land. So maybe I won't. So this happens. I'll take out both of those creatures. Now... I can go ahead and Greater Gargadon and sack this. I'll make my land drop. I think I'm not going to do the whole Veteran Explorer thing right now. I think I'm just going to hold up um, Orcish Bowmaster's Ambush. Well, that's unfortunate. That card's not even particularly good against me. Um, but in this specific spot, it's kind of annoying. All right, so opponent walks into Bowmaster's. Um, I think I am going to ignore uh, Magus of the Moon. I'll go ahead and ping here. I'll block with the Orc Army token to trade. And then I have a creature on the empty board here. And hopefully I just draw marginally better than my opponent. Um, as long as I hit one land drop of any kind, I get to play Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And then I loot through my one drops, and life is good. Unfortunately, we're not there yet. I do just have a looming 9-7 creature. Uh, that's awkward. Are you going to Chalice on two? You're going to Trinisphere. Sure. Uh, it is unclear to me whether or not that is a good play for my opponent. Um, the reason being that one of the things that they want to draw is a Chrome Mox. They want to be able to Chrome Mox imprint a red card, play a card, and this Trinisphere is cutting them off of that. 
The next time they play a red land, they also just lose their City of Traders, so their Trinisphere is probably going to end up hurting them more than it hurts me. Uh, my opponent realized that and conceded. All right. Yeah, um, so just like looking at the deck construction, I have nine one drops. Many of these can just be green sunned out. And a lot of times I don't even care if Cabal Therapy gets countered because it can still do its job of sacrificing Veteran Explorer. So I'm a little surprised that Chalice is even in against me. Um, the game on the draw is pretty tough though. I could like try to adjust my curve a little bit, like get rid of Titania for another Endurance or something. I don't think I'm going to do that. I could go down Cabal Therapies on the draw, but if my opponent doesn't have the nuts, I still want to be able to Cabal Therapy and name Sticker Goblin. My opponent has Mulliganed. I have just mana here. I don't think I am interested in this. I can choose my own stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, this is fine. I'm going to get rid of one of these three drops. I think broadside. I'm not sure that it matters too much which of the three drops I get rid of. Okay, cool. I get a chance to place something. Uh, with that draw, it will be Veteran Explorer instead of getting uh, Dryad Arbor. So now I sneak Veteran Explorer in under Chalice. I've got Fury to clear my opponent's board for the next turn. And I can do so while also dropping something like Fable. Um, we might be pitching this now and actually casting Fable. Okay, uh, looks like my opponent just doesn't have a turbo hand. In which case, things might get a little weird. Because if they can't go turbo, I don't necessarily want to just ramp them immediately. Moxus is so fucking scary. Okay, they are going turbo. There's a spirit guide. Here we go. Ah, uh, it's the high roll. Fuck. That's what I don't want to see, because if Muxus comes down, I can't just fury away everything that comes with it. Okay. Please no Muxus. Nine mana. Rolls of 18 and 20. Rabble Master is fine. Last card Muxus. Last card Pyrokinesis. Why? <laughs> Why? Just let me block, take one, save Pyrokinesis for a big scary thing that I do later. I need red mana. I don't have that yet. I'll pick up another green here. Yeah, um, I'm gonna take one. And the rest of my turn from there is pretty damn good. Green Sun for Veteran Explorer. Sacrifice Vectron Explorer. Three mana, four mana. Or sorry, two mana, three mana, four mana, five mana. But I don't have a second basic in this color. I, I think I'm just going to use Green Sun for something else. But let's do this. Yuri, Pitchcast, Greater Gargadon. We'll take out Rabble Master and a Name Sticker Goblin. And I think I'm okay just taking three points of damage to go ahead and play Fable of the Mirror Breaker so I can loot through this Phyrexian Tower. Um, I could choose to not loot through it, actually. Really? Um, sure. Okay, that is a legal Magic the Gathering play. So one, two, three, four, five mana, six mana. Green Sun for X equals 5, get Titania. I'll go ahead and loot away the Phyrexian Tower, though. Broadside is cool. Yaw. Attack. Opponent goes to 18. Fetch. Uh, this will get my second red source, a Taiga. X is 5. Titania. Titania targets Wooded Foothills. I'll pass turn, I'll fetch in upkeep. Yaw. Um, I can just grab something like Dryad Arbor at this point. I am more than good on the mana front. Uh, Chromox is fine. Those are your last card broadside then. 
it is. If my opponent does anything prior to blockers, they can throw a Namesticker Goblin at Titania uh, to kill that. And then I just like block with Dryad Arbor and Elemental Token and kill their broadside. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Block, block. That decision to get Dryad Arbor was really good. And I, I, I think my opponent is just not playing towards Muxus. I, I think this game is about them casting a six mana card. I think their Chrome Mox is potentially, potentially more valuable working towards a real end game. Ooh. Uh, that's good. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's fair. Well, I put some cards in my deck with the intention of helping this matchup, so that was a good choice, but I'm not sure that my opponent knew how to play that deck. I think the matchup would be tougher against a better pilot. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, which is just the best place to host your online deck lists, and I don't think it's close. I think it's wonderfully organized and you can have a great system of folders so that you can go through, separate your decks by whatever you want. I separate mine by format. Um, I have just a few legacy decks and Moxfield is able to keep track of all the decks that even someone like me makes. So please consider checking them out. All right. Uh, we have a kind of average-ish opening hand. I'm gonna just start on the Veteran Explorer. I could just like Cabal Therapy Blind and name something like Brainstorm. Um, I, I think I can just do better if I wait a turn cycle. But now I've got some options. I think I am just going to fetch a Bayou and end up casting Cabal Therapy once. I'm just going to name Brainstorm the first time safely. I think my opponent often plays Cephalid Breakfast. Okay, yeah, confirmed. I'll go ahead and attack. Situation's a little weird. If I Cabal Therapy them, I'm ramping them. I don't think I can just leave them with their stuff, though. All right. So we're going to pick up a Swamp and a Forest. Okay, my opponent has two basics in their entire deck. That's good to know. Uh, I'm going to be choosing their Cephalid Illusionist here. Fantastic. And we are doing the rare post-combat Broadside Bombardiers. My opponent can daze that if they want. Yes, I accept this. So the reason why I'm just doing this is that I don't want my opponent to be ahead on board here and just like slam that Teferi on an empty board and start plussing it in a way where I just don't get to like attack with the broadside. And so like I've made my opponent's cantrips worse by doing this as well. Uh, this second daze though, I'm gonna play around. And Fury lines up much better against Teferi than broadside does. My opponent shuffled with their ponder. Oh, it is an Esper build. All right. The fairy's in play. I can play Fury around days. Ooh. I'll play that a little bit later. All right, here. Yeah. I play this Fury. I can immediately deal four to the Teferi. Ooh. Force of Will pitching days is incredibly good here. I'll now Cabal Therapy my opponent and take their Nomads. Okay, got it. Um, so now I'm reliant on the top of my deck here. My opponent has no combo pieces. I do have like some hasty creatures. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I am not a wasteland deck to cleanly answer that. Uh, this is quite bad. That, on the other hand, is quite good. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total mana. I'm just going to do a quick check. Titania is probably better than just Grist here. All right. X is five. Get Titania. Target Verdant Catacombs. I don't need to Cabal Therapy or anything right now. Uh, I think I'm just going to pass the turn. The Saga ticks up. 
My Titania probably gets bounced. Uh, yeah, that's happening. I'll make my 5-3. Uh, I'm going to do a weird play here. I'm going to go ahead and grab Dryad Arbor. I'm going to then sacrifice Dryad Arbor to make a second 5-3. And then this gets bounced to my hand. My opponent will probably Orem's Chant during my turn. They can do that to kind of fog and protect their Teferi. At least that's what I imagine is happening. Now yeah, there's the second white mana. Um, Orem's Chant, uh, very good when you have the time to kind of do the, the things that it is capable of doing. All right, I'll keep Orem's Chant. Yep, and this is a creature's can't attack this turn. It's not like can't attack you or anything. Oh, I'm chilling. The Collector Oof is like legitimately not bad because it can shut off the Shuko that my opponent is about to get. Um, but if they found an Illusionist, they, they do just get the win this turn. Uh, there's the Shuko. And my opponent's going to start digging for their Illusionist. I am currently not able to Endurance. Uh, my opponent turns on Endurance. Not that I have it, but... Oh, fuck. I could have fizzled that uh, by sacking with Phyrexian Tower. Uh, small misplay on my end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. Kind of eight mana. Maybe eight mana. Uh, junk that. Do this. Do this. I'm just gonna, like, play some stuff pre-combat here. Grab Verdant. Broadside represents more damage. I think playing the Collector Oof is more important. I'll attack now, though. Send it. Now my opponent's thinking about something. All right. Notably, my opponent was very close to dead here. Uh, broadside is two damage, putting them to nine. This is seven damage, putting them to two. But I don't think that's what I'm playing towards right now. Red, red, green, green, black, black. Uh, land drop doesn't super matter then. I could Cabal Therapy for Force of Will here. I'm not going to do that, I don't think. I could Cabal Therapy for like a Cephalid Illusionist, or not a Cephalid Illusionist, like a Nomads in Core since I just shut off Shuko. Sure. That's a Thassa's Oracle. Is that just a fair? This is a blocker. It is. Uh, sure. Okay, yeah, that's off because of the oof. So, uh, yeah, one, two, three, play broadside. And we get there. Um, I didn't play that one perfectly. Like, I missed something that I knew to do. But overall, I'm happy with how that went. I think I got a little lucky. Uh, so I am interested in copies of Endurance. That's a way to potentially stop Athasa's Oracle kill. I say potentially because, like, Teferi exists. I'm probably going to play Chokes. Probably going to put the Scavenging Ooze in there. Uh, honestly, most of my cards are reasonable. I have... Like, Fury and Meltdown that can respect Urza's Saga tokens, but they're not really good against the rest of the deck. I think I'm going to end up junking most of this stuff and just trying to play a reasonable mid-range deck. Um, Actually, do I need two Collector Roof? Two Collector Roof might be excessive. Choke's just, like, not perfect against this opponent because they have... Uh, like Cavernous Souls, Basic Planes, Urza Saga. So it, it does damage. I'm not sure that I'm in love with it when I'm on the draw. And I might play this when I'm on the draw. And then when I'm on the play and like Green Sun for Dryad Arbor or Ignoble Hierarch um, turns on Choke. That's a little better. If I submit this though, I'm a little soft to Urza Saga. Let's do this. Maybe go down a Grist and one Fable, maybe? Not 100% not sure. Um, it takes a lot of reps with a deck to truly figure out what your approach to any given matchup is. 
And while I've got a good general feel for legacy, sometimes it's hard to, with 100% certainty, figure out what is going to be most important in a matchup. All right, opponent's just cantripping. And it is a shuffle. So now we're going to start playing this whole Cabal Therapy game. Um, I think with my first one, I'm just going to name Brainstorm to make the follow-up Cabal Therapies next turn more likely to be good. Ooh. Oh, that's brutal. Yeah, go ahead. Ooh, yeah, no land draw from my opponent. So this is, this is juicy. So I think this is a two for one. I think my opponent has to force of will this. They disagree. I snag a veteran explorer. I now get to cast Cabal Therapy targeting you. A days. Sure. Uh, I don't have mana to pay. Not right now. I will in a second. Yes. I will pick up a swamp and a forest. I'm going to go ahead and just pass priority here. Let this mana empty. Now I'm going to go ahead and cast Cabal Therapy, targeting you. Take this step through. I'm going to take the step through first. This leaves my opponent with Force of Will to Fairy Tundra. Now I will go ahead and cast a Green Sun. This gets Dryad Arbor, Cabal Therapy, target you. Sacrifice this. I'll now take your Teferi. Uh, this leaves my opponent with Force of Will and Tundra. Uh, and next turn I get to dump two creatures into play. And am very far ahead. Sure. Okay, there's a fetch land. Uh, my opponent, like, probably doesn't have the Force of Will anymore. That card's not bad. I think I can just hold up Endurance here. I don't want to just die to the perfects. Okay, so there's the fetch. Uh, sure, that's fine. I, I will play Endurance now to just stay aggressive. I do need Red Red in theory, I guess. Or I took Furies out. So I'll cast this. This is uh, dazable. I don't think I need to mess with my opponent's graveyard. I don't think I need to put my Dryad Arbor back in my deck. Sure. I could hold that Verdant Catacombs for Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Swords of Plowshares. Got it. That saves my opponent a lot of life. They're still taking a lot of damage, but, you know, the, the Urza Saga buys time. It is very good at that. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss these cards. I don't super expect that my opponent has them still. They could. Uh, I'll hold this one. My opponent paused for a long time, so they have a playable card of some kind that they're thinking about. And there's just some debate about what to do with it. So let's see where this goes. Um, I imagine my opponent's going to get a Shuko anyway, uh, even if this is turned off, because Swords to Plowshares later can turn it on. Hey, look at that. So it seems like my opponent potentially had that earlier. Oh, an actual attack. I kind of thought my opponent would just hold back. Oh, okay. That's their, their plan. Just sword and shield. Got it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Um, so talking about this, I can get a collector oof and then I never die to a combo on my opponent's turn. But I think I am supposed to just take... Uh, I'm going to confirm that one of these is still in my deck. Yes. I think I am just going to take the mid-range line here. Could get ooze. I've super overpaid if I'm getting ooze. I think if I just did this for three and hold up a bunch of mana with ooze, it's actively good. I think it's too late to do that now. So now I have two five three elementals queued up. And I'm good against everything except Illusionist or a combo now. Sure. Swords. It is another swords. I can still fetch and get one. Doesn't matter too much what land I get. 
Um, I will attack and trade for this construct. I'm perfectly happy to do so. Uh, with the exception of Cephalid Illusionist specifically, I think I'm currently top decking better than my opponent. Ooh, now that's a damn good one. Sure. Um, so I couldn't trade here. I don't think I have to. I think I'll wait. I have some cards like Meltdown that I can draw that just let me get through for the damage. And this is one of the frustrating things about playing against this deck, is that you can play to beat the combo, but you can potentially just lose to the mid-range stuff if you do that. So like sometimes even if you have lines that disrupt the combo, you just can't take them because you will just lose to like multiple Urza Sagas like we're seeing here. Sure. Oh, deck. I'll hold both of those for Fable, I guess. Uh, but like I am clearly no longer the beatdown, which is unfortunate because my opponent's at seven. So these are four fours. And they are about to be five fives. Uh, assuming there's another artifact to find. There's another Shugo. So I now could really use one of those meltdowns that I put into my deck. I think at this point I have to just block. I have some fair cards that I can draw that can keep me alive against two construct tokens if I'm still at a respectable life total. Sure. Okay. What is that doing right now? Another Titania? Just good old army in a can. One, two, three, four, five, six. X is five. Already playing around days, so that's fine. Second Titania. Target Verdant Catacombs. I'll put a Phyrexian Tower into play. And pass turn. I'm probably getting pretty close to running out of vegetables. Basic mountain, basic forest is still fine. I think I have one more taiga in the deck. What does my opponent have that they could be considering in their upkeep specifically? Brainstorm doesn't make sense. Lords doesn't make sense. You just wait on that. Not sure what that's indicative of. Okay. Black mana is online. Operation Flyer is online. Okay, opponent does not attack. And passes the turn. I'm going to get some elementals. So I'll grab Swamp here. Basic Forest here. I guess I could grab Basic Mountain here. That's probably better. And, okay, that represents another critter. So I could attack all out and trade for my opponent's board while leaving myself with a 5-3. That's probably fine. Okay. I think taking some bodies out of play is actively good for me because it helps with dread return. Uh, so I'll fetch. Leave myself with that extra 5-3. I'll leave Taiga in the deck, pick up the forest, and we'll clear the board. Gotta dodge Cephalid Illusionist for just a little bit longer. Okay, that's fine. So there's not that many Narc Amoebas left in the deck now. Veteran Explorer, not great currently. I don't want to trade this for Narc Amoeba. Uh, do I? I don't think I do. Maybe I do. Maybe maybe every Narc Amoeba I take out is just super important right now. And I just kind of hope that I have a higher density of creatures in my deck than my opponent does. Tradesies. And then I just have a Veteran Explorer around. One reason not to do the line that I just did is that if I draw a Grist, I can like play Veteran Explorer, sack Veteran Explorer, kill this, attack for five, instead of just repeatedly attacking for one. Repeatedly attacking for two. Are we on force of will? <laughs> All right. That's fair. I'm not sure that I'm in love with that force of will, but I get it. Um, especially since my opponent could just have like two force of wills. What did I play last turn? I just played Veteran Explorer. Yeah. Fuck that card. 
I'm so done with this Urza saga shit. Okay. Is this the scavenging ooze from hell? It feels like this is the scavenging ooze from hell. I think I'm into it. Activate, or cast rather. Scavenging ooze. I'll pass turn. Or, I mean, I'll attack, but... I will have some things to do at end of turn. Alright, so... My opponent, in theory, needs to take this scavenging ooze out of play in order to combo off. They could try to reach a point where they just like Urza Saga and kill me, but my scavenging ooze can probably gain a very respectable amount of life and make that difficult. The Urza Saga token is a 3-3 base. It can be a 5-3 with Shuko. I'll just attack with a ooze that's larger than that very easily on my turn. Yep, yep. And we see double Shuko equip. End of turn. I'm going to eat stuff. Okay, a whole bunch of clicks later, I have cleared out a lot of my opponent's graveyard, as well as some creatures from my own graveyard. Uh, this represents lethal. At this stage of the game, I am fine just firing this off and trying to attack for lethal. Holy moly, folks, that was a slog. I didn't play that one perfectly, but we played it good enough, and we're undefeated so far with Nick Fit. Okay, I've got two lands here, no mana ramp of any kind. Uh, this one is just going to go back. I don't think it's fast enough for the format. This has no colored mana, unfortunately. That also has to go back. I'm not being too picky at this stage. Yeah. So this is a keep. I'm going to get rid of Bowmasters. And probably this. My opponent is a known reanimator player. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take a called shot here and name something like Entomb or Reanimate. Let's go Entomb. Fuck, very wrong. All pass turn. Let's see what my opponent opts to do with their turn. They can hold up crop rotation, which is like. A little bit awkward. They could just like crop rotation for a wasteland immediately and take me off this bayou, which is very good after I've already mulliganed, um, which looks likely. And it is indeed happening. Basic swamp is fine. I'm just going to play that and pass the turn. All green sun for uh, who's he, what's it next turn and get two more basics into play. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. You know what? That's okay. Basic Forest. Still get the Veteran Explorer. And next turn I get to sack it with Phyrexian Tower. And then start Grist plussing my way into this game. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Sure. Uh, I guess the attack for one is pretty free. Healthy 18. Do this. Sacrifice the Veteran Explorer. Yes. So something I can do is I can play two Grists this turn to just make more insects. Am I going to do that? I think that's a little weird. It might just be my best path towards victory. Yeah. I'm paying three mana for a 1-1. One, one. Doesn't feel great, but it's not like my opponent is going to play out very many creatures that Grist can actually answer. Uh, we're going to start seeing the manual Dark Depths tick down. Sure, that's fine. Like, th Thespian Stage is, is the thing that matters at this point in the game. Oh? Okay, they're just going to fetch now. Just fetch around some sort of opposition agent nonsense. You can pull your counter off Dark Depths. I did not. That's such a good draw. Very happy with that. Uh, so something that I am going to have to keep in mind is that Grist is currently milling me, which can eliminate some possible green sun targets later on in this game. Uh, and I'm not just going to fire off Assassin's Trophy on Dark Depths until it's just on the stack. Sure. Sure. 
how much is this? Uh, one, two, three, four. We're not in lethal territory yet. Send it. But it's at 12. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Six counters left. Uh, notably, my Dryad Arbor has been milled over, so I can't fetch a point of damage here. Ghost Quarter's fine. Metabon's fine. Ball Therapy's not really relevant here. Get my opponent for four. Again, one, two, three, four. Um, these attackers are just lethal next turn. I'm just going to Grist plus. And then that is just lethal next turn. We've got Assassin's Trophy for if my opponent tries Dark Depths combo. Yep. I don't, I don't need to fire off the Assassin's Trophy yet. Uh, and notably, this is life loss, uh, not damage. Uh, for something like a uh, cavern. The four copies of Endurance can come in as incidental graveyard hate, same with scavenging ooze. I can actually also consider playing Meltdown because taking out a Mox Diamond or some Urza Saga tokens can really matter. I guess by that logic, I can also consider Collector Oof. Bowmasters is pretty mid here. That's probably going to be my first board out. I'm not overly excited about Cabal Therapy either. If I board out Bowmasters and Cabal Therapy, that leaves me a little reliant on Greater Gargadon to sacrifice Veteran Explorers. This could be 8 for 8. Fury's not really good either. Fury is a 3 3 double striker late game. Let's keep two ways to kill. My own veteran explorers. I think I'm just going to make them bowmasters. Bowmasters have points of power and toughness, and Cabal Therapy doesn't. It's it's just very hard to line up Cabal Therapy meaningfully versus a lands deck. Uh, this is fine. I'll keep this. I can nuke the graveyard if my opponent goes for an all-in life from the loam hand, and otherwise I've just got like. Ooh, shit. Are you doing it? Not doing it. Gargadon now? Or basic land veteran explorer? No, I can't basic land veteran explorer and then still play Gargadon. Let's let's get the Gargadon ticking off a of Taiga. The nice thing about this line is that if my opponent wastelands me, I can just like start making greater Gargadon progress. Let's pop that out. All right, so here is the mulch. Uh, that's that's a draw three. So every turn I'm going to be asking, like, is this the mana bomb turn? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. So my opponent has a life from the loam that I can nuke, and that makes this a lot less bad. Uh, yeah, you can wasteland me. I will sack it to the greater Gargadon. I'll lose some lands. This tick ticks down. Now oh, let's get rid of that. That's a combo card. So, land, veteran explorer. Before I give my opponent any mana, I'm just going to endurance. So, I'll have two mana this turn. So I'm not going to do anything with. And then next turn, I'll have one, two, three, four mana. I can just cast another Endurance. I think I'm just going to get rid of this. Keep the more flexible cards. All right, get out of there. Now, with the Evoke Trigger on the stack, I'll sack this. You know what? Still with the Evoke Trigger on the stack, I'll sack this too. I'll pick up green, red. I guess I could just get another Veteran Explorer right now. How is that? Is that good? Yeah. I'm going to pick up Veteran Explorer. I'm not going to sack this one immediately, though. I'm just going to let this one chill. I can just attack for one with it next turn. And then sack it later. Uh, Greater Gargadon can be alive when I want it to be alive, by the way. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mana. I can just like cast both these things and start beating with Gargadon if I am willing to sack my lands out. I don't think I am. 
I think I'm just going to send in this turn and deploy my stuff. So, sack this. Yes. Pick up two more basics. I've still got some basics in deck for ghost quarter purposes. I'll drop. I guess I want to do this off the bayous. I'll drop collector roof, which is not doing a lot right now. I'll cast an endurance at the end of my opponent's turn after their mana bond trigger. And then the next turn, I'm probably willing to sacrifice a couple of lands to get greater Gargadon into play. Ooh. So this is my blocker for this. Yeah. So I'm actually going to target myself here and put another endurance back into my deck. So we might end up in sort of weird territory. I'm going to play this. And pass turn. The opponent can make their 2020. I'm not instantly dead to it. But I don't have permanent answers to it either. So. That's where we're at. All I need is one more endurance though. What's this? Uh, okay. Good to know about. So. I block, I'll sack it to Greater Gargadon. So I have one, two, three, plus nine damage, uh, assuming I fetch Dryad Arbor. I am going to get that extra point of damage into play, I think. Uh, let's see what I draw. Ha! <laughs> Oh, oh, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is absolutely disgusting. Cast. Combat. The joy that this is bringing me right now. Uh, yeah, you can take out my red mana. I'll pick up another basic. Send him. Oh, my opponent goes to four. Four is so much. Oh, my God. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're a bully. Okay, my opening hand is not amazing, but I don't think it's worth mulliganing either. Turn 2 Grist is pretty good against a lot of the fair decks of the format, but I'm going to need more action off the top. Okay. How are we doing over there? How are we feeling? Oh, fuck. Do we know what we're playing against? And we know that we need to draw Endurance. Uh-oh. <laughs> There's a problem. It seems like my Graveyard Hate is in my sideboard rather than in my main deck. Fuck that guy. Um, I can play a Grist. It can be an onboard removal spell versus a Grizzlebrand. So, like, okay. Plan has changed. Let's try to stop it from getting into play in the first place. I'll name reanimate the first time around. Uh, maybe that's not true. Maybe the first time around I name like animate dead. Yeah. Let's name animate dead. Ooh. Okay. Got it. So now I would like to fetch Dryad Arbor and probably just take both dark rituals. I'm gonna lose my grist. Unless, unless we do this, uh, so we go green, sack, or double black, grist, grist plus, cabal therapy, target you, sack the insect token, and then name dark ritual. That was a good line. Glad I saw that one before I passed the turn. So now my opponent's Thoughtseize and Grief aren't particularly good. They've already got a creature in Graveyard for Entomb, and by taking Dark Ritual, I make it so that they can't just flashback Faithless Looting for immediate value. And from here, I can, like, Grist plus Cabal Therapy again. And we're just hoping that my opponent does not top deck a reanimation spell, like, right now. So I'll start to pull ahead if they don't. Uh, results... That is a shock that targets my opponent. Bowmasters is okay. So, 
Grist plus. We milled over another Cabal Therapy, by the way. Take in Tomb. Yeah, play a land drop. Cabal Therapy, target you. Sack this insect. I think I'm just going to keep my opponent. Oh, fuck. Main deck Helm of Obedience? Wild. Uh, I'll pass turn, and if my opponent puts a Faithless Looting on the stack or whatever, I'll Bowmaster them. And if they don't, I'll Bowmaster them anyway. Yeah, I guess my opponent is, like, also Leyline Helm. Faithless Looting, you say? Sure would be a shame. Someone made a big booty orc in response. So there's an initial point of damage, and then I'm going to get two more Bowmaster triggers. All right, so they have discarded the helm and a troll. Um, this is a little bit of a weird build. This is a slightly different take on some of the, like, fair red-black reanimator lists that have been running around. I'm looking for some action off the top. I don't get it. Grist is getting close to being a real amount of damage. It's two right now. I'm hoping for it to become a little more. I guess I can turn it into one more uh, with Phyrexian Tower. I can fetch Dryad Armor. This is just going to be hard cast the grief. I have nothing in my hand for you to take, so this is just a blocker. So end of turn, I'm going to grab the Dryad Arbor. And let's see what my draw step produces before I take any actions. Another Grist. So I have 3, 4, 5, 6 damage, 7, 8 damage with this Grist ultimate, which is not lethal. 4, 5, 6, 7 damage already takes my opponent off reanimate. So with 6 damage. So I think I'm okay with just 1 Grist minus here. So I'll sack... Um, I'll sack the Dryad Arbor. That just puts another real creature in Graveyard for the purposes of an ultimate. Make a land drop. I'm going to attack for five. I don't think I'm going to play the second Grist. I just end up with one more insect token and in the same place. I think I'm just going to leave this on board as a removal spell and then have this as backup for if we somehow devolve into a mid-range fight. Uh, very happy to win game one there. Got a little lucky. Well, maybe I didn't get lucky. Maybe my opponent chose to register a suboptimal deck. Like, that That might be the better way to put it. Like, maybe we just lose to stock Black-Red Reanimator, where they just have one more reanimation spell rather than um, the Helm. So I have to kind of think about this whole Veteran Explorer situation now. Rolls an X5. Fury doesn't kill it. Fury kills Grief. I think I'm getting rid of Oof. I think I'm getting rid of Furies. Dismember is more reasonable. It kills Troll and Grief. I'm going to kind of end up playing a mid-range endurance game a lot of the time. I'm going to be thinking about Endurance, Ooze, Dismembers, seven cards. I don't know that I'm going to board all of that. I could probably go down one of these. I could, like trim this package in some capacity i still want to ramp the lands it's a little sketchier if my opponent has like uh, a helmo obedience combo as a thing they're doing some portion of the time second grist is expendable i need two more cuts it's some portion of this package i think i'm gonna go with gargadons the gargadons are a little awkward if my opponent just thoughts uses me and reanimates them actually Maybe for that reason, we do this. I think this is more beatable than this. I, I think just the 9-7 is scarier than the go-wide 5-3. Because my opponent doesn't always have more lands. This is a weird one. Uh, this is a really weird one. Because I can nuke an early graveyard attempt, and I can stop an early troll or something but i don't have green or red mana i think i'm still going to keep this i i think this is an awkward acceptable hand sure that's fine 
I guess if my opponent is leylining me some portion of the time, it's like less relevant that they take creatures from my hand. I don't know. You may thought seize me. Um, presumably taking this guy, but like this has value. This has value. Like if they take the Cabal Therapy, they get they get the whole thing rather than half of it. Yeah, my opponent took the Cabal Therapy, which leaves me with an awkward hand. It got less awkward. I drop this into play, which drops my Endurance. But then next turn I can ramp while establishing a threat. But my opponent can just like Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual, Helm, kill me at any moment. Uh, I lose Endurance. That's fine. So do I want to ramp my opponent? Feels like no if they're stuck on one land. I will leave myself with the ability to sacrifice it and the ability to hard cast a dismember without paying life and call that good enough. Uh, yeah, just awkward. Like they took Cabal Therapy, which makes me think they have the helm, so I don't want to do things that get them closer to helm. Like my opponent kept their hand, so like maybe they have. I don't know. Um, I guess I'm not ramping them, right? I was. I would just be. Yeah. No. You know. Never mind. The last like thirty seconds. Uh, that is in tomb. So my opponent does indeed have a grizzle brand. I've got okay outs to this. Like I can still draw, uh, say, an assassin's trophy. And take this out of the way, but life's bad. Yeah, I think you're supposed to main phase, draw the cards. You haven't made a land drop. Uh, grief occurs. Dismember doesn't do anything right now. Probably just lose the broadside. The broadside gives me weird outs to Grizzlebrand. My opponent has played their land drop and is now like tanking again about what to do. Okay, now they're gonna just pass the turn. That's fine. So Dismember doesn't get me through this Grizzlebrand here. I'm not technically dead, but this is probably not recoverable most of the time. And as soon as my opponent produces a second creature, uh, it's just not realistic for me to win. Like, one, I can Lock Sack and get the, the Grist or whatever. The second one... It's too much. All right, are we getting the helm kill? Looting is under there. Uh, it's just a hard cast grief, which is awkward. I'll fetch. Red mana doesn't just instantly win me the game or anything here, so I'm just going to grab Bayou. Use grief. I pay two life and then pay for the rest. My issue here is that my opponent can just rattle off. Seven more cards if I draw a single target removal spell. That is not good here. I don't have any land to bring back because of the ley line. Uh, I, I think at this point I'm okay calling it and moving to the next game. I think I'm going to oof. I think I need to respect ley line helm a little bit more than I did. And the oof is also better when I'm on the play. I don't think I get to mess with the Veteran Explorer Cabal Therapy package. I think this comes at the cost of some mid-range slot like Fable of the Mirror Breaker. I could just play one of these, actually. And then play, like, a Fury or a Fable. Um, again, when my opponent doesn't have Leyline, if they get a Fury and use that to wipe my board and then have a 6-6, six, six, well, you know. 6-6 six, six left over afterwards, that's pretty bad. Uh, I think I'll just keep one Fable. Well, here's to hoping that my opponent doesn't Leyline me. Leyline is so much value. Like, fuck you! Leyline's so much goddamn value versus this hand. Alright. I think I'm still doing the therapies. It just feels bad. I'm gonna go with Entomb. Alright, we hit. <laughs> Excuse me? Okay. Uh, I pass turn. My opponent's opposition agent is some shit for me here with Green Sun and Wooded Foothills. Hopefully they don't sorcery speed it. Good, they didn't. Oh, this is incredible for me. 
Fantastic. So, Cabal Therapy target you. My opponent responds with Dark Ritual. In response, I will fetch. You don't have mana right now. Yeah. So I can get Bayou to Cabal Therapy this turn, or I can pick up Red so that I can just like broadside that opposition away a little bit later. What am I more interested in? I think my colors. I think my colors. Yep. So like I can choose not to take this Massacre Girl out of my opponent's hand and just leave that stranded there. I can't kill my opponent quickly though. I think I'm just going to put it in the graveyard. A second opposition agent. Uh, understood. I'm fine just taking some chip shots from this. The hope is that I trade with it in some capacity. Don't mind that at all. I think I'm holding this back with the intention of trading in combat. Or stopping my opponent's attacks. I'm fine with either one of those. And then if I draw, draw a creature, I just chuck it at this and move on with my life. I would not be attacking if I was the opponent. Unless you have drawn a Dark Ritual. In which case, I think an attack is reasonable. Ooze. Hello. I'll go ahead and play that. Uh, and now I'm okay attacking with Broadside. I've got the Menace here. Opponent's at 18. I have a 3-3 three, three and growing scavenger ooze. Scavenging ooze. And at some point, I can go for Cabal Therapy nonsense as well. Take out Massacre Girl. I'll eat other things from my opponent's graveyard. They're not super relevant. So, Cabal Therapy, target you. I can take the Grizzlebrand and just eat it immediately, which I think I'm fine with doing. Sure. Animate Dead, Faithless Looting, Leyline, Opposition, Agent. So I think there's a looting there that I clicked through. I'll now send in with both my creatures, and the Ooze can eat Grizzlebrand. That's an illegal block. After no blocks, take out Grizzlebrand, gain a life. I want to take six. And they're not far away from just a broadside fling victory. My opponent's animate dead is currently not doing anything. So they can faithless looting and give me things for scavenging ooze to eat, including the looting itself. All right, animate dead and ley line go. And I will go ahead and chip away at my opponent's graveyard still. Uh, the stuff that's there is unlikely to matter, but there's just no downside to me getting rid of it. Assassin's Trophy, this attack for six, fling for three is not lethal. Uh, so accordingly, I don't think I'm going to use Assassin's Trophy yet. I can just wait. Like, just holding up this green mana is so strong right now. Opponents at 5. I could hit them for 4 here uh, if I fling the ooze. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I just don't want to get got by some sort of weird, you know, dark ritual, dark ritual, helm, perfect draw. Sure. Now, end of turn, I will go ahead and use some mana to Assassin's Trophy this. I don't want my opponent to have 2 blockers. This will let me grow the ooze again. Taking out Opposition Agent, and we'll, like, eat an Animate Dead while we're in there. Um, so we potentially have a post-combat Green Sun. Um, I don't want to do it pre-combat, because that just, like, runs into the Opposition Agent that I know is there. My opponent has to play Opposition Agent and block Ooze with it, which is fine. My opponent goes to three. They're dead to Broadside. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cast a spell anyway. Pick up, like, another body. Stay done. Broadside, target you. Throwing Endurance for good measure. Are we playing for a trophy with Nick Fit? We're playing for a trophy with Nick Fit. All right. Trophy time. I have a keep here. 
It's a little weird. I don't do the veteran explorer thing on a turbo scale, but I have it on turn three with broadside fling, and I have a collector roof on turn two that might randomly steal a matchup. I I think this is like, <laughs> don't turn one me. Don't fucking turn one me. Let me have this shit. Don't do it. I'm going to be so fucking mad if I get turned one with Collector Oof in my hand. Okay, that's a good sign. Uh-huh. Pass turn. Pass the turn. Fuck yes! <laughs> Greatest of all time, Thraben Yu continues his path of bloody murder through this league. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay, um, getting that game is super, super important. I think this matchup is bad. Um, we have some amount of interaction, but I don't know that we have enough. Endurance can help with blanking a Beseech the Mirror line. Another Collector Oof is great. Another Scavenging Ooze is great. A Meltdown is uh, solid as well. So... Fury probably goes, Greater Gargadon probably goes to make room. That gives me these. This is still 62. I'm going to go ahead and sort these by mana value now. Uh, let's count this as a one drop. Assassin's Trophy is slow, but sometimes you just need to answer a Wishclaw Talisman. I don't need two of these. And I probably don't need two of these. Like, I still want to have access to Grist as tutorable removal for something like an Urza Saga token. But this is this is probably the best we can do. Come on, Nick Shit Trophy in the year of our Karanos 2024. So this hand has a turn zero endurance and a turn two Boutmasters. And on paper, a turn three oof. That's only fine. I don't know how picky I'm going to try to be in this matchup when I just don't have a lot of relevant interaction. Yeah, so my opponent takes the thing that represents oof and also knocks me off of endurance temporarily at the same time. Not great for me. What do I get? I just pick up a land. Okay, um, not great for me, but my opponent now has to play around like Schrodinger's Endurance, where I may or may not actually just have it. Okay, Duress is a blank. Ooh, I don't think we're on like Dryad Arbor levels of deep here or anything. Okay, casting that is probably better than playing Bowmasters immediately. Name Wishclaw Talisman with it. Or another payoff card of some kind. Beseech the Mirror is the one that kills me the fastest. Should probably just name that. Okay. Let's do that. Beseech the Mirror. Uh, would have hit on Wishclaw Talisman. All right. I don't want my opponent to ever put that Wishclaw Talisman into play. We salute you, Noble Tree. So the reason I, I so aggressively want to attack Wishclaw Talisman is not only is it a tutor, but it is also an artifact for this Mox Opal, which is currently not online. So the next thing that I need to do is deal with this Ad Nause before my opponent gets to 5 mana. I can do that in a couple of ways. Like, I can just draw Green Sun and Collector Oof, and that kind of answers Ad Nauz. I can draw another discard spell. Lose Bowmasters. I ideally would like to get this Fatal Push out of my opponent's hand before I play a Collector Oof, was going to be the rest of that sentence. However, I am just going to jam this Oof. I have a second one in my deck. And I just need to use my mana every turn. I, I just can't pass the turn here. That is just not a viable line. So I'm just going to trade with Fatal Push. And then I can cast an end of turn Endurance on my opponent's next turn. And we can go from there. 
I mean, Cabal Therapy resolves. They know about this. So they're going to take it. And they're just going to let me keep this around for a turn. Man, if I draw a discard spell and take this Fatal Push, that is such a victory. My opponent probably has more than one basic land. We're not going to try to get super, super cute with Assassin's Trophy here. I'll just make a land drop and pass. Uh, definitely nervous right now. All right, we're chilling. I'm going to play the land that my opponent knows about. And not let them know that I'm running on empty here. They opt to just immediately fatal push. That's fine. I need... I basically need anything that's not a land. And I think I'm going to do the super, super marginal fetch to thin here. Um, going to 17 doesn't change anything about this game state. Picking up an endurance is fantastic. That gives me a clock while allowing me to potentially clear out the graveyard in response to uh, duress is fine. Um, anyway, potentially clearing out the graveyard in response to something like a cabal ritual. So I am going to absolutely send that stuff back into my opponent's deck. Uh, those cards, for the most part, are not good draws at this stage of the game. Fable is not doing anything by itself, but it loots me towards a card that will do something. And I think if I play another relevant card next turn, there's a very good chance that I'll just win. Also, my opponent's life total is getting low enough that Adnaz is not just guaranteed anymore. Yeah, very happy to loot away this land here. Get out. Uh, Veteran Explorer is not relevant. Send them. It'll push is fine. Um, just slightly suboptimal thing on my opponent's end. They gave me a treasure token that they did not need to give me. So Veteran Explorer puts my opponent on a two-turn clock. We're hanging in there. That land is no good for me. We're going to hold that in hand. On set four. I know two of their four cards. They are dead on board. Trophy 413 bin you, please. Hey, that feels good. Uh you know, I'm I'm really happy with how this worked out. I think Theodore's original brew was pretty strong. And I, I think I caught one of the big problems beforehand. Um, I, I think I caught the fact that the deck needed some extra removal to be competitive, and the Furies and Dismembers were things that we absolutely boarded in and absolutely were strong throughout the league. Nick Fit feels a little more competitive than it has in the past. Like, the fact that Bowmasters can randomly generate a huge creature on turn two is very solid. The fact that it can do that while also being extra Cabal Therapy fuel and also killing your Veteran Explorer kind of fills a hole in this deck list. I don't know how good this deck is going to be if you, you know, run enough leagues with it to get a large sample size worth of data. Like, I, I think we ran a little hot today. I, I think some of our opponents made some decisions that I got to punish pretty heavily. But... Like, we, we got to throw a greater regard on at our opponent's face for a kill, and it resulted in a trophy. You know, it, it, it feels good. As far as changes I would make to the deck list, I did not board in choke in a single round. That's not to say that the choke is bad. I wonder if the chokes are going to be the best use of my sideboard slots. So, like, for example... You know, Choke could be competing with Carpet of Flowers. Choke could be competing with uncounterable creatures like Shifting Ceratops. That's something I would need to like actually play some matchups versus Beans to see how that feels. But there's definitely something here. This deck was a lot of fun. It was competitive. And it had game versus multiple archetypes. Raven U, Seal of Approval. And if you want to pick up any cards for this one... Check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your next order. Folks, I hope you all have a wonderful day. I'm going to go post on Twitter for clout. See ya!